Hello, this is Dr. Sunil Mahagavkar, Faculty of Mechanical Engineering Department, Government Polytechnic Mumbai. So just I am continuing the last session uh, of which uh, I have, we have discussed it, the design of a knuckle joint. So I have taken four steps, that is the design of the rod end D we have designed the failure consideration and uh, design of the pin based on shear failure so two areas you are going to get it so that means that part the pin is failed in three parts so it's a double shear if dp is the diameter of that one so you will get the total area will be twice of pi by four dp square so into the resisting stress which is equal to the applied load to do it so then you can calculate what is uh, diameter of the pin or else if uh, if you take dp is equal to d so i can find what is the st shear stress and that should come less than the allowable okay so and after that uh, designing of the pin so we have uh, we have discussed it the design of i based on uh, shear as well as tensile and uh, what we get is uh, one interesting note that so both the equation for tensile as well as uh, shear so they are same except the stress so that is load is equal to in both the cases it is uh, outer diameter that is d minus dp uh, into V into tau S in case of shear and uh, it is uh, multiplied by sigma t in case of uh, tensile. So in such cases, so since um, our main designing is for the lower stress, hence we have to go for first shear stress, shear failure and then we have to go for crushing. So after this, uh, now let us, uh, we will uh, study that uh, the design so in this figure so this is the thing but the i is uh, and this is uh, four right so this is subjected to as i said it, it is a tensile force we are applying so as we discussed the i it is in case of shear it will be sheared here at this one and in case of tensile it will be perpendicular to this so that area we have already discussed and we have designed the i okay so now we in the part of uh, designing the four so first we will go for shear failure okay it is just like a part of height i for this part and only the difference is here the thickness it is called as b and here the thickness is called a so here a is b is 1.25 dp and here a is nothing but 1.0.75 diameter of dp so so now when this pin is here and suppose if it comes out if pin is very it is strong then what is that it is if it is strong than the fork so it will shear about this section so similarly here you will get one more area are you getting it so these two areas this is the area I'm talking. so this area is nothing but a d minus dp upon 2 into a right so d minus dp upon 2 into a so this is one area so twice of this if i do it so that is twice of d minus dp upon 2 right so this is the total area you will get it 
This is the first area is this one. And since there are two areas, I am going to get a twice of d minus d. So if I consider this upper portion as well as the lower portion, so hence I am going to get two more areas of failure in shear, right? This is the shear and this is also shear. So in all total, the resisting area will be it is two twice of this d minus dp upon two into area a right so this is the total resisting area so this resisting area multiplied by stress so now if tau s if tau s is the allowable shear stress if i say tau s is the allowable shear stress of the material if tau s uh, see here if i put uh, tau s value is the allowable shear stress for the fork material so then uh, i can say that applied load p is equal to this area resisting area right d minus dp upon 2 into a right into tau s for the fork right so like this i can get it in the total this one what we we'll get is uh, 2 to get cancelled that is twice of d minus dp into a that is p in case of shear it is uh, twice of Twice of d minus dp into a right into this is two to get cancel out so into shear stress for the pop so substituting what is that d is equal to twice of dp where dp is equal to diameter of the rod and a is equal to 0.75 dp so i can get the induced stress induced stress that is tau s this it should come less than the tau s allowable which we are marking, which we are taking as uh, 0.5 SYT upon factor of safety. Are you getting it? So, RS, if it comes more than this, if it comes more than that, so then you design A, design A, find A based on assuming this value, that is tau S is equal to this value. You take it as it is and then you design a with this you just keep it on that and then find out a from that equation so this is the way to design the shear okay so whatever uh, i have discussed here the same thing i can show it on the ppt So here the fork and the pin is shown here with the force P is applied at both ends and if the uh, pin is stronger than the fork so it will have a shear at this one so the area as shown here the D minus DP upon 2 where D is the outer diameter of the fork and DP is the inside diameter so this is the resisting area if you get it twice so as i said that is the resisting area you are going to get as ra is equal to twice of um, twice of d minus dp upon 2 a right so this thing we have already shown it so tau s is equal is the fork if allowable shear stress is the fork is this one then it is a point five of uh, strength upon factor of safety. So, 
so then the applied load p is equal to the resisting area multiplied by stress so using this equation i can get the value of uh, a you can a, you can design it by taking fs uh, tau s is equal to this on this equation or else uh, if you go for the proportion you just put uh, proportion d is equal to 2 dp and a is equal to 0.75 dp and dp is equal to the diameter d in this equation you can find what is the allowable shear stress that is called individual shear stress that should come less than the other okay so this is how we can calculate the design uh, of the fork based on shear value. so that means we are checking the dimension a from here right so the after this so let us we will go for design of the fork based on tensile failure right so if you consider the design of failure based on tensile so again the areas what uh, a into that is a twice of a into d minus dp so here so just uh, i will take it in the this one I will, I will show it here this tensile so the shear failure tensile failure if i take this section This will go for uh, the favoring ten sign. If pin is there, so it will try to shear at this point. It is all perpendicular. Right. So this area I can take it here. This is one area, this is the second area, and this is the section. So this will play. Similarly, here in the bottom portion also, you will get the failure. Yes. Right. So this is the failure. So two areas, one area at the top and the another one is at the bottom. That is, if a deep D is the capital D is the outside diameter and DP is the inside diameter. So that is the total length. Length into breadth, that is A. What you will get is the area of one. So since there are one at the top and the another at the bottom, so the total resisting area is twice of d minus dp into a. Okay. So now taking this one, twice of d minus dp into a. Right. So if Sigma T is the allowable tensile stress. It is how we are going to calculate is uh, just 0.5 of SYT upon factor of safety. If Sigma T is the allowable tensile stress and if this is the resisting area, so then the applied load P is also equal to the resisting area multiplied by stress. So, resisting area here twice of d minus dp into a, this is the area, right, into sigma t or the fork. Okay, this is based on shear value, this is based on, sorry, tensile value. 
again the shear is also same equation you will get it in the shear we have got the same equation you just see here cancelling this two to get cancel out here and again you will get the same area so that means if i consider this uh, as a shear failure of the fork again you will get the same areas that is twice of d minus dp into a into tau s so if i consider these two so tau s is less than sigma t hence first you have to design for shear as we are designed and then you have to go for designing just you put the values here because already you have to know what is d dp and a right so that value you have to put it here and find what is sigma t allowable that should come less than this is called induced stress you have to find the induced tensile stress and that should come sigma t allowable what is sigma t allowable is nothing but this one. okay so if it is greater than that so then we have to find the di uh, dimension a based on tensile so this is how we have to um, design the fork in the shear as well as tensile So the same thing I can uh, explain the design of fork based on tensile failure with the slides. So here as I shown here this is the fork it is subjected to p by 2 p by 2 on both sides hence the area you are going to get perpendicular to this. So that resisting area is given by d minus dp into a. So like this one area you will get at this point and the second area you will get to put here. So that is twice of A into D minus DP. Okay. So if sigma T is the allowable tensile stress for the fourth material, so then we can calculate the SYT upon factor of safety. If you do it, you can get it that value. Okay. So putting that value, I can get uh, if uh, because already we have on time uh, these dimensions are found from the uh, shear so hence you just put the value of a shear that is a value which you have got it from that or d minus dp from that one and then find out what is sigma t of the fork that should come less than the allowable tensile otherwise if it is coming more than the allowable so then we have to redesign the things okay so after this we will go for because the pin uh, will go for the bearing stress or it is called the bearing pressure so the pin is subjected the pin is in contact with the fork as well as i so there is a failure of the pin the bearing failure of the pin due to i or the bearing failure of the pin due to fork or vice versa if i take it bearing failure of the i due to pin or bearing failure of the pin, uh, fork due to pin okay so the later cases that is the bearing failure of the i or the fork due to pin we are not taking since uh, we are making the strength of bearing that is the bearing pressure we are taking at the higher level for the um, uh, I as well as fork. This you try to understand. So bearing stress for uh, bearing strength of the material which you are designing for the pin, it should be kept at lower side than the bearing strength of considering the bearing strength of the I or fork. What is the reason? Because if pin is failed, we can replace it very easily. Yes. Whereas, on the other hand, if the pin is uh, strong, yeah. if the pin is strong in bearing stress, okay, bearing stress or strength, 
so in that case you may get the failure in the fork or failure in the eye so the replacement of eye or fork these are nothing but the ends of the rod right we are there are many more operations are there and the material everything it will be get best so that's why the bearing pin when you are designing a pin so the pin strength should be we have to keep it at the lower side when it is compared with the fork or on this one that means the strength should be lower that means the bearing stress uh, whatever the value you have if you take the allowable shear stress for the fork or the eye material it should be at a lower than the allowable shear stress sorry allowable bearing stress for the pin material that's what i am saying okay so based on that we are uh, studying that one bearing pressure or bearing stress since why it is called bearing it is because the pin is in uh, contact with the eye or the fork and it is not having a rigid contact so there is a relative motion between the pin and the eye or the pin and the fork so that's why it is called bearing stress or uh, bearing pressure it is not we are not using the term crushing so this thing is a pin this is a eye and pin is there so since the contact is the contact stress will be there usually this is elliptical in nature you are going to get contact stress so actual distribution is like this so with this distribution it is very difficult to find what is the stress so that's why we assume that this stress is uh, uh, applied uh, that is a uh, uniform throughout the cross section so if i take the uh, throughout the cross section like this so this is the resisting area that is called the projected area if l is the length in contact in case of uh, knuckle joint it is b okay if l is the length in contact and d is the diameter of the pin so in that case i can get uh, that bearing pressure is equal to load divided by the projected area that is the uh, load is p and the projected area is l into dp where dp is the diameter of the pin and l is the length in contact so here what we have considered l in case of i it is b b into dp okay so this about the bearing pressure uh, this is the same thing uh, it is explained here design of the pin based on bearing failure okay so um here so bearing pin if sigma b is the bearing pressure of the stress in the pin material so then b is equal to resisting area into uh, permissible stress of the induced pin okay so here what i'm saying design of the pin based on bearing failure due to i okay so the uh, thing is that here resisting area is uh, b into dp you will get it and b is the thickness of the eye and d is the outside diameter of the eye and dp is the inner diameter so b is this one and this is dp right so sigma c r is nothing but the yield strength upon factor of safety usually the tensile line it's usually we are taking is equal to the tensile stress so in that case uh, p is equal to b into dp into bearing of the pin so we take b is equal to 1.25 times the dp and dp we have to put it and then find out this bearing uh, pin failure so this should come less than the allowable uh, failure of the that is a bearing stress for the pin material okay so the other one is the eight is the design of eye based on bearing failure due to pin so design of eye this is a vice versa so here i am designing the eye based on due to the failure this is due to the pin because we are assuming that pin is stronger than eye in that case i am designing the eye 
So that's why this factor I have to take it. So that is the bearing of the eye if you take it and that should be uh, again the equation you are going to get the same. That is the resisting area is B into DP in both the cases and if uh, this B into DP is the resisting area into the permissible stress that is the bearing stress if you do it. So what you will get is uh, here bearing due to I. It is the bearing pressure of I. So taking that value or else you take 1.25 and DP and this should come less than the bearing failure of I. So you in that case only you can say that it is safe design. Otherwise you may get failure chance in the I. Right? So that should not happen. So if it fails in pin, okay, no problem. Because that's why we are taking the strength equation. The bearing strength it should be high at the higher level for the I and fork. Right? So the same thing that is uh, after this, uh, we will go for the design of pin based on bearing failure due to fork. So here, so the allowable bearing stress of the pin material that is the resisting area into the permissible stress in the pin. So resisting area is A into DP, right? So A into DP you are going to get uh, it is a failure in the pin at the top as well as at the bottom. So that is twice of A into DP you will get it, right? So this is the resisting area twice of A into DP into uh, bearing of the pin. We are taking nine design of the pin due to fork. Okay, so this when we check it here again, you just put the values of A D P here, and this should come less than the allowable bearing stress of the pin. The next one is the design of fork based on bearing failure due to pin. It is same the equation whatever the resisting area. In both the cases, uh, whether the design of fork or design of pin uh, due to the bearing failure of the pin or due to the fork, in both the cases, you will get the same areas of failure, right? So, if sigma b, uh, sigma is the bearing stress for the fork material, so then the resisting load uh, or the applied load is equal to resisting load which is equal to resisting area multiplied by permissible stress or induced stress in the fork. So RA is equal to twice of A into DP where A is the thickness of the fork right and DP is the inner diameter. So in that case the contact area uh, that is the uh, area what you will get is twice of A into DP that is the resisting area. That is uh, here that is A into DP at the top as well as at the bottom. So that's why the twice of A into DP into bearing of the fork. So here so this we have to check it through. that is you just put the value of A and DP over here and this should come less than the bearing of the fork. Okay so after this so the last point uh, we are going to design that is uh, design of the pin based on bending failure. Okay. So so now we will consider the failure of the pin in bending. So what are the failure in the pin we have so far we have studied is the failure of the pin in shear and uh, failure of the pin in bearing due to the eye and due to the fork and now we will study the failure of the pin in bending. So let us say this part just I will take this is the fork so here the force is acting in the upward direction isn't it. The force is acting in the upward direction and this force is acting in the downward direction, right? So this will have the force at this point. Okay. 
so here so the load which is uh, whatever i have shown here rectangle so this rectangle load this rectangle load it is a uniform distribution load in the circuit so uniform distribution so this is total is p so now what uh, we have divided here you are divided in two equal halves from the center line from the center you take p by 2 on either side so this uh, distance so this distance is equal to what it is equal to p right that is the thickness of the eye are you getting it so if i first we will divide this part into four equal parts b by 4 b by 4 b by 4 and here also b by 4 now from the center line if you take it half on either side that i will just distribute p by 2 on the left side as well as p by 2 on the right side okay so this portion it will act as a supporting member this portion in your portion is this portion it acts as a supporting member in the fork right and here when you uh, you take uh, just an example of this so you can consider these are the two supportive of this one and this is the i so at this point at this stress the stress will be more so that means here the stress will be more at these points inner point the stress will be more and the outer point the stress will be less so here you will get more stress and at the point outer you will get less stress so the distribution so that's why it is assumed that it is a triangular distribution that means the reaction at uh, this end the reaction at this point it is taken as uh, right angle triangle right if anything if it is like this so then the resultant of this will the resultant reaction will act at a distance of 1 by 3 from the base 1 by 3 from the base or you can take 2 by 3 from this edge so this is you have learnt in that is the intensity of pressure that is, uh, it will pass to the CZ point of that uh, load distribution. So here the load distribution is uh, since it is a triangle, just I am taking the length. So here this distance is how much? It is A. So this distance, the load, the reaction, it is P by 2. It, this distance, it should be, is how much? A by a by 3 and this will be 2a upon 3 are you getting it so this thing i have shown here this distance is a by 3 and here also this is a by 3 and this distance is b by 4 now this is the center line this is the center right so you can have the taking the moment about the center taking the moment sigma v is equal to sigma v is equal to mv into c upon i what is that bending moment and c is equal to what c is equal to dp upon 2 so that is the diameter if dp is the diameter so then it is nothing but dp upon 2 and i is equal to pi d uh, pi d raised to 4 upon 64 so here actually it is uh, you can take dp or uh, d nothing it is both one and same d is equal to dp hence you can take either d or dp so uh, since dp is the diameter of the pin i can uh, rewrite as pi dp raised to 4 upon 64 so taking that value uh, you can put the value now we have to we can put these values directly and get what is bending stress uh, for that i should know what is bending moment so to calculate the bending moment this is necessary so we are knowing the distribution of the load on the left as well as right side you take on any one side either you take left or right side so now here i will take left side of this one 
so p by 2 is acting at a distance from the center is p by 4 right and if i take the moment about o this is uh, p by 2 it is acting in the clockwise direction p by 2 into p by 2 into a by 3 bro so this is a by 3 right plus b by 2 b by 2 is this distance right a by 3 plus b by 2 that is moment in the clockwise direction that is load p by 2 that is the reaction p by 2 into a by 3 plus b by 2 this is positive because i am taking uh, this as a uh, clockwise as a, uh, this is uh, clockwise as positive and anti clockwise as negative from the center line if i take this one that is p by 2 is acting downward and at the center it will be in anti clockwise so that's why it is minus p by 2 okay p by 2 is this distance and the distance is b by 4 so p by 2 into b by 4 so that is uh, anti clockwise so by summation of this it will give p by 2 into a by 3 plus b by 4 so this you had to um, add it here and you find what is bending stress so this should come less than sigma b for the pin okay so this is how we can uh, calculate the bending stress okay the same thing i can show it on the uh, slide so from the current slide okay design of pin based on bending failure so this is the pin this is the pin is here in the fork and the load which is taken as p it is central load due to the i right and uh, p is the this one so p by 2 on this on either side so the p by 2 on either side is the load it is at a distance of p by 4 from the center line o right and the reaction is a triangular reaction right angle because the stress intensity will be more at this point right so that's why reaction will be more at this point and it will be less here so that's why the distribution we have taken right angle and the resultant will always act at a distance of uh, 1 upon 3 from the base okay one of the three from the base so it is a a is the dimensions for that so it is a by 3 okay so after taking that one you can take the moment take the moment about this sigma b is equal to mb into c upon i 32 mb upon pi d q and sigma b is equal to this okay using this uh, the central load p on the p can be assumed that half on each side of the pin okay b by 2 a x at the a by 3 from the base as i said so taking the value the bending moment this is a clockwise you can take positive p by 2 into a by 3 plus b by 2 right minus p by 2 into b by 4 so the summation of these things by taking p by 2 bracket outside and the summing up what you will get is p by 2 in, into a by 3 plus b by 4 okay so this is how we can just put the value of mb over here c and i because everything we have designed you just find out what is the allowable bending stress that should come less than the uh, permissible stress permissible value of the bending if it is coming more in that case you design the diameter of the pin based on bending okay so in the conclusion just uh, keeping in view to enhance the life of the machine component discussions are made on the type of the joint the function of the knuckle joint and the application of the knuckle joint so the designing and details of various uh, failures of the component used in knuckle joints are also discussed see in, at the end some of the uh, things i can show it uh, 
uh, for you for the cases where the, the things uh, used in the application point of view see here it is used uh, these are the tie bars it is used to fit up in the tie bars at this ends and uh, if it's a king post or queen post are there in the joints the upper knuckle joint and the lower knuckle joint this is the case of a liver that's as i said fulcrum point and this point these are the pin joints wherever it is a knuckle joint okay so the other things are uh, okay here i will show some of the parts so just uh, this is exactly this thing it is a sprocket this chain that some pin joint it is used as a knuckle joint this pin joint okay and this is the actual thing it is there So here, this is a two ends. So one more joint will be there. It is an angular. Uh, here you will get uh, the pin joint will be there here as well as here. Okay. So this type of uh, knuckle joints is used in the uh, parts of the trains like that. Are uh, the tractor points? Uh, tractor uh, trolley and uh, that one. It is made by this type of joints. Okay, so I think uh, I covered you the total design of knuckle joint with all application. So, thank you.